Hi, this is CJ from GetTracking.net. What I'm going to show you here today is how to use the portal entrance. Uh, you can see here we have two app icons. You can download the app from the uh, App Store or the Google Play Store. Uh, there's a third way to do it. You can also go to GetTrackingGPS.com right here on your phone browser, and it will automatically load in to the native web application as well. But since we're on a PC today, we're just going to go ahead and log in and show you how to use the system. It's going to load straight into the dashboard, similar to our other system. Uh, on this dashboard, you're going to notice a few things. Uh, we've got our contact number and email address up here if you have any questions. Uh, on the actual map, you've got uh, vehicle status. Uh, this is similar to the other system. It automatically pops up, though, on this one. Uh, you can see here that uh, this device we disconnected from the power source 10.7 hours ago. The device has a battery life of uh, 3.9 volts uh, left. It was stopped. It stopped moving 12.9 hours ago. Um, so that's all useful information. You have your address and your latitude and longitude. Uh, you can press check, and this will check the heartbeats. Uh, you can press edit, so we'll edit real fast. And you can see here I've got an icon of my vehicle. Uh, any pertinent information you can add in here. So we're going to go ahead and close this. Uh, a neat feature with this system is you can add geozones at any point. It will queue them for download in the device. So if I wanted to add a geozone to this page somewhere, I could press add zone. And it's going to put a pin right there. And you can put your information here and then press save changes. We're going to close for now. Uh, so what we're going to do is now we're going to go back to that device. I'm going to press right here and press the pin drop. It takes me back to the device. Uh, one cool thing you can do to see your history is go to quick history here. And this is the quick history of the device. So I just kind of drove around the block yesterday after powering it on. Uh, we're going to, once you clicked here, you can select all of them and press map. And it's going to put all of the, every two minutes it checked in on this map. Uh, the neat thing about this is if you're stopped for at least five minutes, it's going to have a stopped location and tell you how long you're stopped for. So we went up to the shop and we were there for 22.2 minutes. Uh, and this is the time and date that we were there. All right, we drove home. You can see the directional arrows. You can click on any of these arrows to see the speed that you are going. You can select uh, miles per hour or kilometers. So this one's at the house. It shows our house address and that we've been stopped for 13 hours. So now we're going to go back to regular dashboard by clicking on dashboard. And you can check location or check heartbeats. So over here on the left hand side, we've got a couple different options that we didn't have on the previous system. Top stops, you can click that, come over here to your vehicle list, select the vehicle, and it's going to show you your top stops. So right now we've only got two because this is a brand new device, um, and we only stop there once at each time. But if you had a device on a car, on your Razor, wherever it may be, wherever that vehicle stops uh, consistently, it will notify you of the top five stops that you're stopping at and what kind of duration the vehicle is staying at that stop. Um, now we're going down to heartbeats and we're going to select the vehicle. And heartbeats happen every four hours while the device is asleep to keep you notified of where its location's at. Uh, you can see here that every four hours it did a heartbeat. Um, and this is the address. And you can also select these and place them on the map. Um, they're all going to be the same spot because that's where the heartbeat was taken from. All right, so you can go over here to alerts to set your alerts. So you have recipients of the alerts. You can add a new one here, press new, type in the name of whatever you want. You can select uh, zones is going to be your geo zones. Low battery is going to be low battery. Uh, SOS button does not apply to these devices because they don't have an SOS button, but you can do power connected. You can do inactivity alert. Uh, this means if the device doesn't report in for a few days um, and there's no reports at all, it will send you an inactivity alert. Uh, impound lot is good if it's on a vehicle. Uh, you can have you can set up maintenance records uh, that says if the vehicle um, goes over four or five hundred miles, it's time to do some maintenance on it. Uh, as a reminder for yourself, uh, recovery. Power disconnect, which is going to be the power disconnecting, essentially a tamper alert. Uh, installation you can put, but you really don't need it. And country exit, uh, you're probably not going to need that as well. Um, you can do different reports, uh, low battery reports, install reports, and expiring devices. If you have multiple vehicles, you can select them 
what group they want to be in. You can add them to a group. You can select email or text. Um, you can do both of these, but you have to set them up as different alerts. Uh, so you'd finish typing in your information here and save it. You need to put notes in there as well. So we've got two here already. Now we're going to go down to alert history. Uh, we're going to select the vehicle. And these are the alerts that uh, I've had. So I, I created a GeoZone yesterday. I exited it, entered, exited, entered, um, disconnected the device last night, and then got a low battery alert because it's running off its internal battery and it's starting to get low. Um, so these are the alerts for this device that has happened so far. Maintenance, I had one maintenance alert. So it's set here. Uh, zones, you can see your zones here. If you want to see where these zones are at, just click on them and press the map button and it will take you to the map and show you these zones. You can zoom in on them and you can even edit them by dragging this around. You can change the size and shape of it to however you want to by adding new new points. So if we wanted to get closer just to the house, we'll drag these just around the house. There we go. And we can just press save changes. And that's all it takes. And it's going to show you that geozone on the map. Uh, groups. This is where you would set your groups up as. If I wanted to set up a new group, and I'm going to call this uh, Razor Group just razors save changes so now I have a new group name so I can put a vehicle in this group and here's some of the actions that we can do users this is where you would add a new user uh, this is my wife right here because this is the device is going to be on her vehicle so her name's right here uh, user history if you want to see what somebody has done, you can choose the user and see what kind of actions they've called for. And that's pretty much to the system. Uh, there's not much more. The, some things we didn't really recover were the recovery, uh, payment reminder, and SID is because recovery is only for one of the battery-operated devices uh, to change its state. Uh, so if you have one of the uh, battery asset trackers, this is where you would go to activate it into active tracking mode where it pings every five minutes. Uh, payment reminder, uh, you could use this feature if you wanted to cause the buzzer to go off or on. Um, that's in the device. Uh, and that's pretty much it for that. Uh, SID, this is where you would use the a, like a 5-volt relay to um, activate some feature, whether it was a starter cutoff or a ignition cutoff. So uh, they're pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, just get a hold of me at GetTracking.net. Thanks.